we might as well put plenty in we don't want it coming out do we no we don't I say that's in for good now. This will fit, or oh, I'll have to do it all again. <laughs> That's the trouble with lives, you can't put it back on, can you? No. Beautiful, beautiful fit. Sorry, I just had to wait for the inverters to stop. <laughs> I've now drilled a 26mm hole into the brass stock and even at a lower speed of 300 RPM it's still very very noisy if you watched the last video so I presume it's just poor quality stock. Well that's my excuse anyway. The next job is to bore a taper and that's what we're going to do. We're now at the stage where we're boring out the brass stock, roughly about 4 degrees. Well it's hard to tell because it's all worn off. This lathe seen plenty of action I think. It's not a short lathe, you guys you can see. Like these ones you see on YouTube all polished, this one gets used. I've decided not to use the taper turning attachment because some people don't have one. But most people don't have one I presume. So I'm doing the work on the compound slide. This brass has also been very, very troublesome. I think it's very, very poor quality. Because whatever speed I run it at, it chatters. If I run it at 600 RPM, it chatters. If I run it at 300 RPM, it chatters. So I've decided to go full whack light speed. I'm running at 1200 RPM, and it seems to like it at that speed, strangely enough. So let's get on with it. A bit of boring at light speed. <laughs> I think that'll do us. That should be near enough. Yes, I'm very happy with that. So it turns out light speed wasn't too bad at all. And it's got the job done. This has now got a three or four ish degree taper inside it. And I need to get the male end into the female end. Oh, uh, it's getting a bit risky this video now, isn't it? <laughs> Most excitement I've had for months. Nearly. But it's not going to fit at the moment. So, I now need to cut a 4 degree 
taper to match exactly that internal taper and my plan is because I've, all, I've still got that set up at four degrees if I was to put this piece in the chuck voila tighten it up and run the lathe backwards that it should cut on the back thus giving me the exact same taper as the internal that's the plan I don't know how it's going to turn out but we'll soon find out Not too bad the finish. Let's see if it fits, if the theory works. And it does. Happy days. Oh yeah, that's lovely that. Oh dear. <laughs> there we go. Right, on to the next stage. I need to cut some slots in that. Maybe with the axe or six in total, I think. I think that'll do. That's near enough for me. Well, that's a bonus. It actually sounds like a bell. I might change the video. We're now making bells, not lay vandals. That's very unexpected. As you can see, I've cut six segments, my lucky number, not really, my lucky number seven. I just don't know how to cut seven segments. The next stage is sticking it all together. Let's have a look. I think that'll do it. That's another good use for a lathe. Holding things. Gives you an extra set of hands. Very versatile. I've just drilled this out. I've done an M10 thread. And look at that, it's another weight. I found another one. I must have got a load of these off the car boot sale. I knew they were coming on day one day. I think this is going to form like a thumb screw for tightening up. But as you can see, it's a bit shiny. So the next job. I may just polish that and knurl it. Very fancy. Okay, the next stage. I did polish this and then realised I didn't have to polish it because I was cutting it true anyway. So that was upsetting. And I decided because I need to run the knurler right to the very end, I can't hold it in the chuck. So I'm utilising the 10mm bar that's needed in the work piece anyway. So that next part is knurling. Now that's the problem. Most knurls you press against to form the shape, thus putting pressure on the lathe itself. But a few years ago I did make the big ass knurler. 
and there we are and I think it's going to be perfect for the job so I'm just in the process of setting that up I've not used it for at least two or three years Let's have an inspection of what we got. At least we know the big ass knurler works. That's unusual for me to make something that works. All those hours of blood, sweat, and tears were worth it. Gosh, that's heavy. Let's have a look at the whip piece. That's the most important. Seems to have turned out well. I'll do for me. Right, let's move on. So let's have a little recap on where we're up to. Cause I think this is now going to be a three-part video. I'm just locked tight in this, so there's no going back. There's no going back now. So we have that piece, and then we have next this, which has spent which has spent a little bit more time cutting those straighter. But I guess you can't fix stupid, can you? So I do regret that a little bit. But that's that part. And then there's a thumb turn. I'm missing the handle, and I need to finish off my forge to build that. But until then, you can see where we're up to. As you can imagine now, as this tightens down the thread, it will push this on to that taper and expand in the back of the lathe spindle, thus holding it in place so we can then use it as a starting handle. And that is as far as we've got so far. So please tune in to part three of the lathe starting handle. I don't look too bad that.